Welcome back for another fun crochet tutorial. Today I will be making these cute, adorable reindeers. I love them so much, so I'm making a buck and a doe to match. Um, I've had so much fun with these little critters and they're super fun to make. So let's start, start by talking about supplies. For these little guys, I'm using the wool of the Andes. Some of them are in superwash, some of them are not. I'm okay mixing and matching a bit for this project and using what I have on hand. The colors that I'm using, um, this is the tweed wool of the Andes in the garnet heather. Then I've got some white. This is the grizzly heather for the antlers. The oyster heather I use for the face. And then the almond is what I use for the doe. And the camel heather is what I use for the buck. I also have this twill yarn here. I just have some left over from a previous project. This is a fingering weight yarn. I really like using this for the eyes and it's really just a small amount so if you have any darker color or whatever color you want for the eyes laying around in a fingering weight that works great. I also use some washers in the bottom of these. I find that if I throw some in the bottom and I'll be showing you that it adds some weight and then they stand up so much easier compared to not putting anything in the bottom and we'll talk about that as we get going. I was using quarters and then my husband was like why are you putting money in your crochet? So he got me some washers to use and they work great. This is about a one inch and I think this is a one and one fourth inch washer. You will need a size 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using the Tulip Red line. This is similar to the Tulip Rose or it's also similar to the Clover Armoire. So whatever hook you like best for this. I love the metal tips for this um, type of color work because we will be working our stitches a little bit tighter. You'll also need a yarn needle a stitch marker for sure, and some scissors. And then of course, I'm gonna pull this on camera here, some polyfiber fill to fill and stuff these cute adorable animals, or if you have some yarn scraps, that can work too. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this is made from top down. We start with this body portion, and we work it from top to the bottom, and then we'll be adding the arms and the hat. For either the buck or the doe, the first 18 rounds of making the head is the same, so I'm only going to be showing that one time since it's the exact same thing for both. We're going to be starting with our oyster heather or whatever color you choose, and I'm going to start by working six single crochet stitches into a magic ring, and I have a tutorial on the magic ring if you'd like to see that a bit slower, um, or you can chain two and work all of these in the first chain from the hook. Now here's where I wanna show you something about the way that we're going to be working these single crochet stitches. So when we do a single crochet stitch, we normally insert into the place we need and then we yarn over. But for this stitch, for this single crochet stitch in this pattern, I'm going to be doing a yarn under. By simply cha changing the way that I'm grabbing the yarn, it twists the stitch. Now why do we want the, the stitch to twist? Well, it makes it tighter. So for this stitch pattern, our stitches end up looking more like X's versus the regular kind of V's. The reason why it's an advantage to use in uh, making crochet dolls or amigurumi is that it's a tighter stitch. And we like that when we're trying to shape something. It also tends to have less of a traveling seam. So if you're ever making a crochet bag or something like that that's worked in the round and you want a really tight stitch to mold the shape as well as have less of a traveling seam, this is a, a unique way to work the stitch. It's more of a, a cross stitch single crochet. So we're going to be doing six single crochet stitches into that magic ring. And all of our stitches for this in terms of creating the body will be worked this way where we're going to yarn under versus yarn over. Now I'm going to close that magic ring, but not all the way. I always advise just leaving a bit of a hole because I feel like it helps in getting into that first stitch of the next round. So we're done with round one. We've placed six single crochet stitches into the magic ring. And now I'm going to start round two. For round two, we are going to be placing two single crochet stitches into each stitch around. I'm going to go ahead and mark my first stitch of the round a stitch marker will be your friend for this pattern. And now I'm going to continue by working two single crochet stitches into each stitch around, and that will increase for round two from six to 12 stitches. 
Now for round three. Before we start round three, we can go ahead and we can pull the center of that tight and you can weave it in if you would like. For round three, we will be creating two single crochet stitches into the first stitch and then pausing and marking the very first stitch of that round. And then we will be single crocheting into the next. And that's our repeat around. So two single crochets into the first stitch and a single crochet into the next. So repeat that around and it increases from 12 stitches to 18 stitches at the end of round three. Now for round four, we will start by doing two single crochet stitches into the very first in the round and then marking the first stitch of the round. Then we are going to single crochet into the next two stitches. And that's our repeat for round four. So that's two single crochet stitches into the next, we're increasing, and then single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Once you get to the end of round four, after repeating that, you'll have 24 stitches. For round five, we're going to continue to increase by placing two single crochet stitches into the first stitch, marking the first stitch of the round, and then we are going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So that repeat once again is to do two single crochets into the next, and then single crochet into each of the next three stitches. At the end of round five, you will have a total of 30 stitches. Now for round six, we will be increasing one last time for the head, and we will be doing two single crochet stitches into the very first, marking the first stitch of the round, <laughs> if I can get that second stitch in there. And then we will be single crocheting into each of the next four stitches. And that's our repeat around for round six. So for round six, you will do the repeat of two single crochets into one stitch and then single crochet into each of the next four. We will be increased to 36 stitches at the end of round six. For round seven through 14, I'm going to do those off camera because those are simply single crocheting in each stitch around for 36 stitches. So no increasing or decreasing. Round seven through 14, you're just going to single crochet in each stitch around and come back for round 15. So now after doing round seven through 14, just single crocheting in each around, it's time for us to start decreasing this head. To do so, we're going to work single crochet twos together, but I wanna show you how to do that to have an invisible decrease. It's also known as an omni decrease. So the next two stitches, or the first two stitches of round 15, will be a single crochet two together. I'm going to do this by entering the first stitch through the front loop only, and then I'm going to rotate my hook and enter the second stitch through the front loop only as well. After doing that, we'll yarn over or under, pull up a loop, and then complete that single crochet two together. And we're gonna mark that stitch. And now we're going to single crochet into the next four stitches. And that's our repeat around, but I wanna show you one more time how I'm doing that decrease. So these next two stitches I'll be decreasing by inserting through the front loop of the first stitch and then the front loop of the second stitch, yarning the yarn under, pulling up a loop, completing the stitch, and then continue on, continuing on by single crocheting in the next four stitches. Once you have completed round 15, you will decrease to 30 stitches. Now for round 16, we're going to be decreasing again by single crocheting the first two stitches together marking that stitch, and then we will be single crocheting into the next three stitches and we'll repeat that around. So once again, that will be single crochet two together, and then single crochet into the next three stitches. At the end of round 16, you will have a total of 24 stitches. 
Now for round 17, this will be our last decrease for the head. We're going to be decreasing just like the other rounds. We're going to start with a single crochet two together and then mark that stitch. And then we will single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that's our repeat around. So that's single crochet two together and then single crochet into the next two. At the end of round 17, you'll have a total of 18 stitches. Now for round 18, we will be single crocheting into each stitch around. So for the buck or the dough, either one you're making, at this point, everything has been the same. So complete round 18, and then we will continue on to making the details for each one. Now at this point, we can start to stuff the, the head of this and you can continue to stuff as you go. You don't wanna stuff them too much because you don't want it popping out and interrupting the stitches that you're trying to work. But throwing a little bit of stuffing in there helps the shape and it also helps when you're trying to, to hold it as you keep crocheting. Now for the dough, we're going to be working this neck ruffle next. This is worked right into our pattern. So we're going to be grabbing the white or whatever color you choose. And for this round, we will be working first in the front loops around for the ruffle. And then when we come back, we'll be picking up this almond yarn again. So we do not fasten off this color. We simply grab our white and what I like to do in order to change colors is on the last stitch that I worked, I go ahead and yarn over and finish that stitch with my new color. That way I'm ready and set up to start this next round with my new color. I can go ahead and push that tail end into the head. It's not really gonna matter. You don't have to weave it in. You can just shove it in for extra stuffing. I'm going to move this almond kind of out of the way and then I am going to, or this is the oyster heather, my apologies. I'm moving that oyster heather out of the way and now I'm going to be working in the front loops only all the way around. So not the back loops, just the front loops. We'll be working quite a few stitches into each front loop for this round. So here is how it's going to go. For this very first stitch, we are going to single crochet and for this, where we don't have to have the stitches tight, you can use a yarn over instead of yarn under, but either way, it's not gonna make too big of a difference. Then we're gonna chain one and single crochet into the same stitch. Then chain one and single crochet into that stitch again. So yes, we are working three single crochets and two chains into every front loop all the way around. That's what adds this ruffle. So let's do that again. In the next front loop only, I'm going to single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, and single crochet. This will create a total of 90 stitches all the way around, including those chains. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, and single crochet all into the front loop of each stitch complete that all the way around. So I misspoke before we can fasten off the oyster because we are going to be using the almond. These colors are so close together, sometimes I confuse them. Now after doing the round for this white little ruffle, we can go ahead and we can fasten off that white, but we can also go ahead and change our yarns without having to um, remove our stitches completely. So we're still just continuing in our stitches and we're going to attach the almond. So this is the slightly darker color. It's this color of the body down here. We're going to go ahead and attach the almond through our last stitch so we're ready for our next round. As far as these ends go, I just tend to pull them tight and then shove them in for some extra stuffing. Now for round 19. This round will be worked in all the unworked back loop only stitches from the round 18. So we just kind of did the round, the neck ruffle round um, on the front of round 19 and now we're gonna work the back of round 19. So we are simply going to be single crocheting in each stitch around starting in the back loop only with the color almond. 
So we will have 18 single crochet stitches. We're just kind of moving that ruffle and working behind it, working one single crochet stitch in the back loops. Now after working round 19, just working the back loops, single crocheting around for 18 stitches, we're going to be increasing for this next round. So we're going to start by working in our first stitch. In the first stitch, we kind of see a little bit of off right here, because this is where we were switching between front loop and back loop. So our first stitch for round 19 will be in the color, or round 20, excuse me, will be in the color almond. So we're going to do two single crochet stitches in that one and mark the first stitch of your round. Then you're going to do single crochet in the next eight stitches and then repeat. So we, we will be doing two single crochets in the first, single crochet in eight, and then repeat that and it will increase from 18 to 20 stitches for round 20. And then in round 21, you will simply single crochet in each stitch around, keeping it at 20 stitches. So come on back when you are at round 22. Now for round 22, we're going to be increasing on this round. So we're going to remove our stitch marker and do two single crochets into the very first stitch. And then go ahead and mark the first stitch of the round. And then you will be single crocheting into each of the next four. And that's going to be our repeat around. So once again, the repeat is two single crochets into the next and then single crochet into the next four stitches. This will mean at the end of round 22, we will have 24 stitches, and for round 23, simply single crochet into each stitch around and come on back for round 24. And now for round 24, we're going to increase again. We're going to start this round by doing two single crochets into the first stitch, and then mark that first stitch of the round. And then we are going to single crochet into the next five stitches, and that is our repeat. So it's two single crochet into one stitch, and then single crochet into the next five. And at the end of round 24, we will have 28 stitches. For round 25 and 26, we're simply going to single crochet into each stitch around. So after you've done round 26, come on back. Now after finishing round 26, we are going to do two rounds for this cute little ruffled skirt. So we are going to be working this similar to how we did the um, neck ruffle. We're going to be working it um, in the front loops only, but we're going to be doing two rounds of the skirt and then fastening off. However, we can go ahead and leave uh, the almond yarn attached this time um, because we can always come back to it. So for this round, we're going to go ahead and switch colors here. We're, I'm moving to red, but you feel free to use whatever color you have. And I'm going to attach it on my last stitch worked, and I'm just gonna tuck in that end. Now for this round, we are going to be single crocheting three single crochet stitches into each stitch around in the front loop only. So once again, we're just working in that front loop only, and we are going to single crochet, three single crochet stitches into each front loop. So it is a lot of stitches. Uh, I believe it is a total of 84 stitches. So we're gonna just be single crocheting three stitches into the front loops only all the way around. Now after round one of the skirt, we're gonna go ahead and work another round just to give it a bit more length for a skirt. We're gonna start in the very first stitch by doing a single crochet and marking it. And then we're just simply going to be single crocheting into each stitch around to give that a bit more fluff. So after doing this round, come on back, we're gonna fasten off and I'll show you how to move on from here. After single crocheting all the way around, we can kind of see that ruffle taking place there. And it's time for us to go ahead and fasten off that red. And we're simply going to weave it in. We can move our stitch marker, grab our yarn needle. We're going to do what's called an invisible join. That's where you're going to insert your needle through the stitch, like where you would insert your hook and pull through 
And then we're going to insert down the top of the last stitch work, right down that top center, and that helps create a mock stitch on top here that makes it an invisible join. Then we'll go ahead and weave in this end and we'll be ready to start round 27. So for round 27, we are going to be working in the back loops only and we're going to be single crocheting in each stitch around. So that's 28 stitches. We can see where we started our round here and we have that back loop. We could simply pick up our almond yarn and chain one. This is the only spot where we're going to do a type of chain to join. Now I could have fastened off and then reattached, but we're just joining here, then we're gonna work continuous. So then we will single crochet into all 28 stitches around. I wanna go ahead and mark that first stitch so it's easy for me to find. and then single crochet the 28 stitches in the back loop only all the way around. You do kind of have to push that skirt down just a little bit to be able to see the stitches that you're going to be working. Now for round 28, we're simply going to be working single crochet stitches into each stitch around. So another easy round of just working those single crochet stitches for 20 eight stitches all for round 28 and then come back for round 29. Now for round 29 we're going to add a little detailing here on the bottom. We're going to be working this round in slip stitches in the back loop only. So I'm going to work in the back loop. I can yarn over like normal for these slip stitches because we're not trying to tighten them at all and complete that slip stitch and mark it. So in the back loop only, slip stitch in every stitch around, and you don't need to make them too tight, just a regular slip stitch. And then for round 30, I'm gonna move my stitch marker for a second here, and we're going to be single crocheting two together in the first and then single crocheting in the next two stitches. But we will also be working this into the back loops only, which means when we decrease, we're going to insert our hook into the back loop of the first stitch, then the back loop of the second stitch. It's a little bit trickier, but not too bad. And then we are going to single crochet those two together. Place your stitch marker in the very first stitch. And then working in the back loop only, we will single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that will be our repeat around. So once again, that is a single crochet two together in the back loop. And then single crochet into the next two stitches. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 21 stitches. So now for round 31, we're going to be changing colors back to our oyster heather. So before I complete my last stitch of round 30, I'm gonna yarn over with that color and join it. Then I can go ahead and I can fasten off this almond and set it aside and tuck those ends in for a little bit of extra stuffing. Now I am adding a little bit more stuffing as I go. I find it easier to just grab some and add it in as you're working this up. Now for round 31, we will be working in the front loops only for this round and we are going to single crochet in the front loop only all the way around. So 21 stitches in the color oyster, front loop only all the way around. For round 32, we will be working in the back loops only for this round and we're gonna start by doing a single crochet two together marking that stitch and I'm working in the back loops only and then single crochet into the next. So that's single crochet two together in the back loops only and then single crochet in the back loop only in the next. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around and we will end with 14 stitches. So now at the end of round 32, this is kind of our last opportunity to do some more stuffing, make sure that we've got the firmness that we like, and then we can go ahead and place the washers in the bottom here before closing. So I'm gonna place a couple of my smaller washers just for some weight first, and then I'm gonna place my bigger washers, which end up being about the right size for the bottom of this. I'm just gonna push those inside of there, and then we'll be doing our last round. 
These washers really do help um, flatten out that bottom. If I put them, position them right on my last rounds, and then it does also help with the weight of making them stand up. Now here we go for round 33. This is our last round, and all we're going to be doing for this round is single crocheting two together all the way around. So we're decreasing from 14 stitches to seven stitches, and we're just doing a single crochet two together until we have seven stitches. Now that we've decreased to seven stitches, we can go ahead and fasten off our yarn and grab our yarn needle. We're going to loop through the front loops only of each stitch around. And after we've looped through all those stitches, when we go ahead and pull this, it will pull it closed and then we can use our yarn needle to flatten that out a little bit while we're weaving it in. I just kind of pull down on that center so that it flattens down, and then we can weave across, weave in our ends, and we are done with the main portion of this dough. She stands up quite nicely. I like how it just, it's almost like a weeble wobble. It will fall down, but with those um, weights in the bottom, I like how it stands so well. Our next step is to make a couple of cute little arms. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that. I've already made one and I'm going to show you the other. So you'll grab your oyster heather and you will do uh, six single crochet stitches inside that magic circle. And now for round two of the arms, we will start to pull this closed, but once again, we won't close it all the way until after we are done with round two. We're going to start round two by doing two single crochet stitches into the first. We're not joining, we're continuing to work the continuous rounds. So two single crochets into the first stitch. It's always, always wise to mark the beginning stitch of the round. Snag something there, so I wanna redo that one. And then we mark our first stitch, and then we will be single crocheting into the next two, and then we will repeat that. So two single crochet into the next, and then single crochet into each of the next two. So at the end of round two, we have eight stitches. Now we're going to move on to round three, and I'm going to change colors to give a little bit of detail for the dough in the arms. We can go ahead and fasten off that oyster heather. And for round three, we're going to join with the white color and then simply single crochet into each stitch around. And now for round four, we will be changing colors again. So you can fasten off that white and grab your almond color and we're going to join and be working round four by single crocheting in the back loops only. So for this one, we're doing the back loops only for eight stitches. And now for round five, we're going to start this round by single crocheting two together and then single crocheting the remaining stitches, which means we've decreased from eight stitches to seven stitches for this round. And now for our final round for the arms, which is round six, we're going to start with a single crochet two together again, and then we're going to single crochet into the remaining stitches, which leaves us with six total stitches for this round. Now after this round, we can go ahead and fasten off with a long tail because you will want to use this to stitch it to the body of your dough. But then also these extra ends, you can either tuck them in, it might make it a bit puffy, or simply cut them off 
and then tuck in any ends that are hanging out up here. It works nicely to leave those strands in there. You don't necessarily have to weave them in. It adds a little bit of stuffing and then um, they will be ready when we want to sew them onto the doll body. Next up we're going to be making this cute little hat with a little bit of color work on it. Um, for this dough I'm using the lighter color. I'm going to show on camera this darker color that's used for the buck, but they are both the exact same instructions for the base of this hat. I want you to see the inside of this really quick. I ended up carrying my yarn all the way around. I just found it easiest to do so and I caught it every few stitches. So we'll talk about how to carry our yarn with this one and let's get started on that. I also want to note that the first um, nine rounds of this hat are the exact same instructions as the head. So when we started this pattern doing the top of the head, it's the exact same instructions through round nine. So I'll be starting on camera working round 10 for this hat, which is also the round where we start our color work. So I have written instructions and a chart for this pattern. You can feel free to work from whichever one you feel most comfortable with. For round 10, we're going to be starting the round by single crocheting in the first 11 stitches with our brown. So I'm gonna mark the first stitch of the round and then I'm going to crochet the first 11 stitches of this round in brown. Right now that I've done 11 stitches, I'm stopping just shy of completing that 11th stitch because we're going to go ahead and grab our white. This is our other color. And we're going to pull through that 11th stitch so that we are ready to begin our color work in the color white. We will be working the next three stitches in the color white. And then we will change back to our color brown and we'll work this for seven stitches. Now here's where I wanna show you how to catch your yarn. I don't like to carry my yarn for farther than three stitches on the back. So if I were to work seven stitches and then pick up my white, it would be a really long float on the back. So here's how we catch those floats so that they um, don't cause any gauge issues. We'll lay the yarn over our hook and continue to work in our current color. And as we crochet, it works around that yarn and it catches that flow on the back. So let me show you that another time. Lay the color we're not working on the over the over the hook and then complete the stitch. And it catches that on the back so that it creates a nice float that doesn't interfere with the um, gauge or uh, sizing of our pattern. So now after doing seven stitches in brown, I'm gonna go ahead and pick back up my white and do three stitches in white. And then for the end of round 10, we'll finish with 12 stitches in brown. And I wanna know as we're working these 12 stitches in brown, because I'll need my yarn, my white yarn, when I work it again way over here, I'm going to need to go ahead and grab it every few stitches so that it's carrying it along with me and that way when I'm ready to work it again that it is um, ready to be used in the right spot. Now you can, if you want, you can cut at the end of every round and rejoin with your white. Um, I just prefer not having to weave in ends so I don't mind floating it on the back. So that is the end of round 10 and for round 11, this will be the last round other than round 14 that I show on camera. So for round 11, we will start this round by single crocheting 10 stitches with the brown. Now I'm ready to change back to my white and I'm going to be working the white for five stitches, which also means for this time, I need to be sure to go ahead and place that brown one over my hook about halfway through those five stitches so that it catches those along the back and creates a nice float. That way we don't have really long strands going on with our hat and it'll fit onto our doll quite nicely. After doing five in white, then I'm going to go ahead and do brown in five for the next five stitches. Being sure to catch 
that yarn as I go. And now since I have five, I'm going to back up, it's going a little fast there, I'm going to change back to the color white and do five in white. And then the remaining stitches in this round will be in brown. And then for round 12, that is simply a repeat around 11. And then come back for round um, 14, which is our last round. I want to talk about how that round has worked. Now for round 14, and round 14 is simply a repeat of round 13, only we're going to be working it into the back loops only. So starting this round, we'll start our first stitch in the back loop only and mark it. The first nine stitches of our round will be done in the color brown. And we're going to still be sure to carry that white across here. Now we're going to change to the white for seven stitches, working in those back loops only and carrying that brown across. And then we'll do brown for three stitches. and then back to white for seven stitches. and then back to brown for the rest of the stitches in the round in the back loop only. Now there's no need to keep carrying the white for these last stitches since we're just fastening it off, we're done using it. Now we can go ahead and fasten off that brown and we're gonna grab our yarn needle and do an invisible join. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker here and to do the invisible join again, we're gonna go into the next stitch as if we're entering it in the way we would our crochet hook and pull through and then we're going to go down through the center of the last stitch worked and pull that down and it creates a nice little mock stitch on top. I'm going to go ahead and weave in all of these ends. Next up we're going to make the cute little ears that go on top of this hat. I just want to note that for the buck the ears are exactly the same. We're just using different colors for the outside and you'll need two ears per deer. We're going to start with the color white and we are going to single crochet six into that magic circle. At this point, you should be a pro at single crocheting six inside that magic circle. And that's what we're going to be doing again for the ears. Now for the last stitch of round one, I'm gonna stop just shy of completing it because we are switching colors. I'm switching to my almond for the dough and we're gonna yarn over and get ready to work round two with our new color. We can almost close this magic ring, but I don't like to pull it tight until after round two. For round two, we wanna keep these stitches a little bit loose because if they pull too much, the ear will really curl in. So we're going to start by working continuously. So in the very first stitch, we're going to single crochet two stitches. And then we're going to single crochet into the next two. And then in the next, we're going to single crochet three. That kind of helps make a little bit of a point for the ear. This uh, stitch where we single crochet three, I like that to be the top of the ear. Then we're going to single crochet into the next two stitches. And then we can go ahead and fasten off our almond, leaving a long tail for weaving it in. We can fasten off our white and weave in these three strands, but leave um, the almond long. I'll show you what to do with that next. Now, as we fasten this off and I, we left that long tail, I wanna go ahead and use the invisible join at the bottom here to kind of finish that off and create a nice clean look. 
And now I'm ready to place this onto my hat here. So I'll be doing some spots as we get going on this next part, but I wanna go ahead and place the ears on each side of this hat. You can do so just simply by whip stitching. So just look and see where you like the placement, then continue to whip stitch that onto the hat there by just looping through each one at the base of the ears. So one of the last details on the hat are these little V's, which I do those with my yarn. I simply uh, move in my yarn to catch it on the back and now I've got my strand ready to go to create these V lines. I like to do one in the middle, right in between on this uh, round nine. And I'm really just stitching a V. It's, it's quite simplistic to do. You're just spacing them how you want. You can do however many you want in whatever order or style you want. I just really like having these little spots. It's a cute little easy detail um, to just stitch on. And then the hat portion is done and it's ready to go onto the doll after stitching on the Vs. Now for this doll, we will definitely need to stitch on our arms. So I like to make sure I like the front, wherever the front is that you like. We do have a minimal seam, but I still like to keep that in the back. So I'm gonna kind of move the ruffles just a little bit and at about round two of changing to the almond color, I'm going to stitch my arm onto that round, simply using um, the whip stitching like I did before on the ears. Going through the arm and the body, just joining those together. Now if you find that your arm possibly might stick out too much, if you don't like how much it is um, sticking out, you can tack it to the body by simply weaving down underneath the arm a little bit farther than where we're seaming and then just grabbing a loop from where that strand meets the body. And that will pull that arm down so it doesn't stick out as much. If you like it up, that's fine too. So sew the arms onto each side of the body and then we'll move on to the other details. Now the only thing we have left to do is the face. So the eyes and the blush, which those are the last details and they're kind of the most important detail to really bring this character to life. So I'm going to grab some of my fingering weight darker yarn. This is the twill, but if you just have some fingering weight laying around, that will work. If you have worsted weight, that should work too. Your eyes just might be a little bit thicker. I'm going to go ahead and um, bring my yarn in. Sometimes I like to bring it through the back so it's a little bit less noticeable. And I'm going to be drawing these vertical lines. You can really place any eye you like. You, there's lots of different shapes you can do winky faces or whatever you prefer. Um, I like doing these easy vertical eyes, they're quite cute. So I'll bring my yarn in here and then I'm simply going to be looping. I'm just gonna be making um, so several lines until it's the shape that I like. and I can do those lines again. And then when I'm done with the lines, I can weave in my end, pulling it through um, the inside here and even out the back and fasten off. And now I have cute little eyes. These ones are a bit smaller than those. I like them both. You can always experiment and see what um, look that you like. And I also kind of like not having uh, two doughs that look exactly the same. So the last finishing touch we'll be doing is those cheeks. And those cheeks are done by simply grabbing a makeup brush and some eyeshadow or, or regular makeup um, blush if you have it, whatever color of pigment you like. 
And for this, I'm just gonna grab some of that pigment and you really just paint it on. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more horizontal lines for this one just to kind of mix it up. You're just placing that blush where you like it, rubbing it in a bit, smushing it in a little bit with your fingers and then it's finished. How cute is that? I love um, creating these little Amis, it's so adorable. So let's go ahead now and let's work on finishing the matching buck. Now for the buck, I've already got the head done because we already did that on camera with the dough. So I am starting at round 19. So I just finished round 18. We no longer need the oyster heather color and we're ready to switch to the camel heather yarn or the brown of your choosing. And I've also started to begin to stuff this little guy. So I'm gonna undo my last stitch at that last step so that I can join my new color. And for round 19, we're going to single crochet into each stitch around working in the back loop only. So simply single crocheting in each stitch around in the back loop only. Now for round 20, we are going to start by doing two single crochets into the first stitch, marking that first stitch of the round so we don't lose track. And then we're going to single crochet into the next eight and then repeat that again. So we will be increasing from 18 to 20 stitches for round 20. And then for round 21, we're going to simply single crochet into each stitch around. So come back for round 22. Now the remaining rounds of the buck are created with the same exact instructions from here on out as the dough other than we're just skipping the skirt part. So I'm gonna do that off camera since it is the same thing, just omitting the skirt. So all the instructions are there. It's just worked in the same way. So I'm gonna finish the body of the buck and then I'll come on back for some of the details. Now for the scarf, we're going to go ahead and just simply chain 36 stitches. Now the alternative to this, if you don't um, like chaining, is you can do a foundation single crochet of 36 and that would be done with the scarf. I'm gonna show you the traditional way where I'm going to chain 36 and then do a row of single crochet. After chaining 36, we're gonna going to start in the second chain from the hook and I like to work the bumps or the humps of the stitches, so that's the underneath side. That way my one edge is really nice and clean when I'm done with this. And I'm going to be single crocheting into each stitch across and then our scarf is complete. It's just a row of single crochet but it works quite nicely. So I'll single crochet across, fasten off, and you'll see it's just simply tied around the neck and it looks super cute. And now we're gonna talk about the arm for the buck. I'm not gonna be showing this on camera because it's the same instructions as the dough, only we're just skipping that round of white and we're simply gonna do a regular round of brown. So it's the same stitch counts and everything. It's the same size of arm and you'll need two, one for each side. And um, it's worked the exact same way as this. We're just making adjustment for not having a color change. So make two of those arms and then come on back and we'll be talking about the antlers. Next, we're going to be working on the antlers for the buck. And we're gonna start by creating a magic ring, magic circle, and then we're going to single crochet four stitches inside that magic circle. We can kind of pull that closed, but of course don't pull it all the way just yet. For round two, we're going to single crochet into each stitch around. So you're just single crocheting four stitches. And this is going to be the first spike. We're going to make two spikes for this and then we'll join them. So this is the first spike. It's quite tiny. Just single crocheting four stitches for round two. And I'm going to turn this so it's facing out the right way. A lot of times our crochet curls inward as we're making it. And now we're going to go ahead and fasten off. Now you can kind of cut your first end and um, use your crochet hook to kind of shove it inside if you want. And then as far as the second end goes, 
we are going to do a invisible join. And then we're going to be setting the first spike aside. So yep, we just made a tiny little spike and we're just gonna set it aside. We're gonna come back and work it in a minute. And I'm gonna pull that invisible join kind of tight because I don't wanna count this one as a stitch because we're gonna pick this up and work it again. And I can simply weave in that end and set this tiny spike aside. Now for our next spike, we are going to be starting the exact same way. We're going to start by doing a single crochet four into our magic circle. We're going to pull that almost all the way tight. And then we're going to single crochet four stitches around for a total of four rounds. So we're gonna be doing three rounds here of four stitches. So rounds two through four, we're just simply single crocheting four stitches. And now we are ready at round five of this to bring back in our small spike. So here's how this is going to go. We're going to work across both of these spikes. They each have four stitches. And at the end of round five, we'll have eight stitches because we'll be using the stitches from all the spikes, from each spike. So I'm gonna start by working the small one. So I'm gonna single crochet around the four stitches from this small spike. And it might feel a bit awkward working these pieces together, but I promise once you're done with this round, it will make sense and look a lot better. So I've worked four stitches from the small spike, and now I'm going to go right back to the next stitch in the big spike, and we're going to be single crocheting into the next four. So now that we've got those together, we can see how this antler is going to work out. And for round six of this, we're going to be doing a decrease. So we're going to single crochet the first two stitches together. And then single crochet into the next two stitches. And then we're going to repeat that one more time. So for round six, we're decreasing from eight stitches to six. So we'll single crochet two together single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that's six stitches now for round six. And for round seven, all we need to do is simply single crochet around again. So single crochet six stitches. And after round seven, we can go ahead and fasten off, leaving a tail for us to stitch this to the top of the deer. Now the last part we need to make for the deer, after making a second one of these, you'll wanna make two of these, then the last part we need to make for the deer is the tail. Now for the tail of the deer, we're going to be using our camel heather, or the main body brown color, and we're going to single crochet four into the magic circle. We're going to pull that almost all the way closed. And now we're going to single crochet for round two. We're gonna single crochet two single crochets into that first stitch. And I do always find that first stitch sometimes if I pull too tight, it's a little bit difficult to get into. So it's always good to keep that first one loose. So we're doing two single crochets into the first stitch and then single crochet into the next and repeat that again. So two single crochets and single crochet into the next. So for round two, we have increased from four stitches to six stitches. We can go ahead and pull that opening closed. And then notice the way these naturally curl inward. We actually wanna flip it. We wanna push it out now because we want the right side of our crochet to be showing for this tail when we're done with it. 
Now for round three, we are going to do two single crochets into the first stitch, and then single crochet into each of the next two, and repeat that again. So that's two single crochets into the next, and then single crochet to each of the next two. For round three, that increases to eight stitches. Now for round four, we're actually going to decrease this again, and we're going to do a single crochet two together, and single crochet into the next two stitches. And we're gonna repeat that one more time. So single crochet two together, And single crochet into the next two stitches. So that decreased to back to six stitches for round four. We can go ahead and fasten that off, leaving a tail for us to attach to um, the deer. I'm going to put some of that yarn inside, cut the rest, and now I want to talk about a little bit more about the tail. I put a little detail in here, just some lines. I thought it was really cute underneath to have some white lines. So you can take your white yarn, and just draw on, stitch on some of those lines for that tail. I might do this one a bit differently. Every single time I make one of these, I tend to like do a slightly different variation. I like making them kind of unique. Um, it's always fun to not have it be perfect, the same and cookie cutter every time to make different unique changes to each one. So I thought I would just do something kind of simple this time. I did more lines before. I'm just gonna do three lines on this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fasten off my white, kind of weave it inside there so it doesn't come out. And now I'm ready to attach my tail to my buck. So I wanna talk a little bit more about this next part. So I've already shown you how to sew on the ears and the arms when we did the dough. The tail will be sewn on very similarly. It's just gonna be sewn on to the back with a whip stitch. And then you'll just simply sew your antlers to the top and do the same Vs. Then you'll wanna finish off with your eyes and some blush, and then you're done. I don't think I need to show any more of that on camera since I've already done so much of it with the dough. I really hope that you enjoy this project. I am thinking about doing an entire Christmas series because I love these. These really could be displayed any time of year. Um, the red is very Christmas traditional to me, but you could always make these in different colors or leave them off. They're really, really cute Ami dolls. Um, I know my kids are just going to love these when they see them. So I wanna wish you the best and happiest of holidays, and I hope you hit that subscribe button and come back for more projects soon.